Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to talk about recursion in Python. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. Firstly, I will explain what is recursion in Python and how it actually works. And then we will see an implementation using a recursive function in Python. And finally, I will discuss a few advantages and disadvantages of recursion in Python. So I hope you are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and uh, press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. Check out Edureka's Python programming certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Now, without any further ado, let's understand recursion in Python. So, recursion is the process of determining something in terms of itself. So, we know that in Python, any function can call any other function. And uh, we can use the function to call itself as well. These type of functions which can call itself till the certain condition is not met are termed as recursive functions. So to understand this for taking a real life example, let's say I want to fill a bucket of water and my function is actually fetching only a cup of water at one time. So I will keep on doing this process or repeating this process again and again and again until my bucket is full, which will be my base condition that I have to fulfill and filling the cup and putting into the bucket will be my function and I'm calling the function again and again so that my bucket is full of water and one more real life example would be the Russian dolls example and uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with uh, Russian dolls but a Russian doll will look like an enclosed box and inside that box will be another box similar to it just smaller in size so that it will be able to fit inside that box and there'll be multiple boxes inside one another it actually makes a lot of boxes in just one. So in this how recursion would work is let's say your function is to find out an empty box or you just want to find a box that does not have any doll inside it. So what you will do is the base condition is actually finding the empty box or the empty doll and the function is to open the box and look for empty doll. So you will still keep on calling the function that is you know opening the box to find out an empty box. That is your function. You keep on calling it again and again until you find a box that is actually empty. So that is how recursion works in real life as well. And now we'll move on to our Jupyter notebook and we'll see how we can define a recursive function in Python. So it's pretty easy guys. We'll take an example of a positive integer and we'll put a factorial on it. So how factorial actually works is if you have n positive integer, let's say the value is 5. So to calculate the factorial, it will be 5 multiplied by 4 factorial and then you have to do 4 factorial also, which is 4 multiplied by 3 factorial and then for 3 factorial, you have to do 3 multiplied by 2 factorial. So this is one process that have to go on until you do not have anything to multiply to. So that is how factorial works and is a very basic and a brilliant example to understand recursion in Python guys. So what we'll do is we'll make a function for this and define it as let's say any normal function and we'll call the function again and again to find out the factorial guys. So we are in Jupyter notebook guys and I have uh, okay. I'll just make it as recursion in Python. So the first thing that you have to do is take a function and if you don't know how to work with functions guys, we have a full tutorial on Python functions. What kind of functions are there in Python and how you can use them. So simply you just have to define a function. I'll call it as fact because we are calculating the factorial over here. We'll just put n and now let's say if n is equal to 1 straight away. I'm just going to return n itself else. I am going to call the function that is fact and I'm going to multiply it with the number minus 1 because let's say okay. I'll just uh, explain it guys one sec. All right, so I have uh, my recursive function over here. Let's see. So we do not have any errors in defining that function. So I'll just call my function for uh, calculating factorial of 5, which is giving me the output as 120. So what I actually happened over here is so the first value was 5 and since 5 is not equal to 1, it went to the else condition and there it returned 5 multiplied by factorial of 5 minus 1 that is 4. In the next condition what happened we calculated factorial of 4 guys. So what happened for factorial 4 since n is not equal to 1 which is 4 is not equal to 1. It went to the 
else statement again and it gave the output as 4 multiplied by factorial of 4 minus 1 that is 3 and then the same thing happened for 3 as well 3 multiplied by factorial of 3 minus 1 which is 2 and then again 2 multiplied by factorial of 2 minus 1 is 1 guys so here our condition is true for the if block and it will return n which is 1 so what will happen here we'll get output of all these values and it gave us the value 120 until our uh, base condition met which is n is equal to 1 so it is very important to know how you uh, stop your recursive function as well because it can create a lot of uh, problems in your code guys and uh, let's say if i want to check for the factorial of 1000 as you can see guys for 100 for 10 and let's say for 3 what we have for let's say 5 and for 7 so this is a very simple example of using recursive functions in python guys so after this example i just want to talk about how we can stop a recursive function so there has to be a base limit in each recursive program or the program will run infinitely so a recursive function has to fulfill an important condition to terminate moving towards a condition where the problem can be solved without further recursion and a recursive function will terminate minimizing the problem into a smaller sub steps recursion can end up in an infinite loop if the condition or the termination is not met in the calls and we have a python's recursion limit as well so in some languages you can create an infinite recursive loop but in python there is a recursion limit and to check the limit we can run the program which is uh, i'll show you guys so you have to import the system module using the system module you can get recursion limit and which is 3000 guys so if i want to check the factorial of 3001 let's say so we have a recursion error guys which is maximum recursion depth exceeded in comparison but for the same value let's say if i get it as 2999 it will give me uh, an output with the factorial of 2999 because the recursion limit will not be reached so it will just give me an output guys and it will take a lot of time because computing this value is a very tidy task it also has a recursion error guys which says maximum recursion depth exceeded in comparison okay so remove this so we'll just we'll just stick to five here all right and uh, now let me just talk about a few advantages and disadvantages of recursion in python guys so why exactly is the recursion bad for us so there are a few points that we have to uh, consider in this uh, example if we follow the logic behind the recursive function it might be hard sometimes so that is one disadvantage as we have looked in the factorial one also and recursive calls are quite expensive and inefficient as they take up a lot of memory and time as well and using recursive functions are pretty hard to debug as well and not only the bad things we have good things for recursion as well so let's take a look at the advantages of recursion so the code is clean and elegant in a recursive function and the composite task can be broken down into simpler sub programs using recursion that is one biggest advantage like i've also shown you how calculating a factorial of a number can be broken down into simpler sub programs using recursion and then you can generate sequence in an easier way with the recursion than using some nested iteration so that is one more advantage that we have with the python recursion and now that we have come to the end of the session don't forget to subscribe to edureka for more exciting tutorials and also press the bell icon to get the latest updates on edureka and check out edureka's python programming certification program the link is given in the description box below and if you have any questions mention them in the comment section below we will get back to you as soon as possible thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!